Thank you very much, um, Adam. Um, like you, I was too old for the Erasmus year. Uh, don't worry about this. This is meant to happen. We're removing that uh, podium until later on so that you can see the screens, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But no, just to take up your point, I was too old to do an Erasmus year, but my son did an Erasmus year. He thoroughly enjoyed it. It was the year that uh, President Sarkozy was campaigning to become president. If anyone remembers that, there were strikes for half the year which shut most of the universities. So my son felt it was an extremely worthwhile venture. Um, he now plays drums in a rock band. But don't take that as a negative about the Erasmus program. He thoroughly enjoyed it. OK, why have we removed the podium? Well, so you can see the screens, because before we have the first of those two panel debates, uh, just a little introductory uh, video to the uh, school education gateway. Are you a member of the school education community in Europe? Would you like to know more about European level actions and initiatives for schools? Do you want to enrich your career in education and participate in courses for further professional development? Then, the School Education Gateway is the right place to learn about and get interested in European action for schools. It will provide you with what you are looking for and even more. The School Education Gateway comes in 23 languages and is Europe's open platform for school education. It builds on very positive experiences with the eTwinning Teacher Community, a free platform for teachers to connect, develop projects and share ideas in Europe. The School Education Gateway is freely accessible by teachers, heads of schools, researchers, policy makers at local and national level, private partners in education projects, beneficiaries of the Erasmus Plus programme, the EU programme for education, training, youth and sport 2014 to 2020 and any others in the school education field. The School Education Gateway is the main meeting point on European school education policy and practice. It wants to bring members of the the European school education community closer together, also with the view of understanding each other's needs when addressing the challenges of school education in a changing social environment. The School Education Gateway offers a wide range of services. You can get fresh insights into school education policy and practice in Europe on changing monthly topics and learn about the European key priorities and actions. Discover publications, materials and toolkits for teachers and school leaders to stay informed and to enhance your practice and tackle the challenges in school education. Listen to expert views and ideas in articles and interviews on school education. Find tools and information to help you prepare an Erasmus Plus application, as well as partners from other countries for joint Erasmus Plus strategic partnership projects. Find in the Teacher Academy online and on-site courses, as well as teaching materials to enrich your career in education. And one more thing. If you register on the School Education Gateway, you can engage with the site more efficiently by posting your own announcements, rating and commenting the articles, or join a forum discussion in the collaborative space. So why not sign up today to use these opportunities? Stay informed, get involved, and develop your skills with the School Education Gateway. Round of applause, I think, for that. Very fine. Very nice. All the, all the little people there had very flat heads, but I don't think it's, uh, that's not meant to be a comment. Um, OK, so the, the first panel, diversity and inclusion, and how the school education gateway uh, can play a part in, in making sure those two very sensitive and difficult issues are addressed in schools today. Um, I'd just say at this point that the six uh, panelists who will be on the panel two different panels, have a string of educational quali qualifications as long as your arm. So I'm not going to read them all out. It's too embarrassing for those of us whose qualifications are only about that big. So I'll just limit it to, to, to the important things today. So our first three panellists, I invite them to come and, and join me. Uh, Leslie Bash, visiting fellow at the International Centre for Intercultural Studies at University uh, College London. Berenger Blondeau, who's pedagogical director of the European uh, Media and Information um, Literacy project, and she particularly wants to talk about the ecfolie part of that. You told me earlier that's Arabic for? Taking care of. Taking care of. Ecfolie, an Arabic word. You learn something new, even at an educational conference like this. And the third panelist in this session, Thomas uh, Spielkamp, who, amongst many other things, is uh, Deputy Director of the German Educational Exchange Service. Okay, I will sit here. Now, we have microphones. Do you, are you, uh, you've got one, that, one each. That's excellent. Let, let's just start by 
uh, getting to you to sort of introduce yourselves briefly, if you will. Um, diversity and inclusion is undoubtedly a big issue. What's your, view, your take on the school education gateway's role in, in ensuring that these issues are, are correctly handled? Um, Thomas, what's your... Yeah, I used to be a teacher and ended up with uh, the National Agency for Erasmus Plus for the school sector. And um, as diversity is one of the, the burning issues now, I can, I'm not a specialist on, on diversity, but I can tell you about the German experience with the refugee crisis. So we have some, some 325,000 young people coming into Germany and they want to be taught languages, uh, culture and so on. They don't speak a, a single word of German and usually they don't speak English. So what have they been trying to do? They have been um, um, building up welcome classes for most of these students. And as um, Adam said, uh, in some countries, education is a regional matter. So the 16 ministry of the German lenders set up websites where they gather material which teachers can use in order to teach their students. Now, imagine you being a teacher trying to find the best materials for the students. Um, you can go to all these 16 websites, but you do not necessarily um, find your way through that. So I see uh, the school education gateway and congratulations on that. It really um, fills a gap which has been there for a long time. The school education gateway could be a place where as a teacher you know you find quality materials. And it's of utmost important that you have these 20, 23 languages because of course you want to find materials in your own language. So um, for me, this is a point which is very strong for the school education gateway. Um, a slight criticism there, I, th I think um, it still concentrates too much on what we as policymakers or people from national agencies need. So we get the full view of school education in Europe and that is very useful. But when it comes to materials, it is still, still not enough. I mean, the ordinary teacher should find a lot of material there and I, I hope we will continue on that uh, later on. Thank you very much. Beranger, I mean, obviously, the, the, all these subjects we're talking about are, are sort of dealt with, if you like, at a national level, I mean, it, it, in schools. But this, the gateway is a unifying force and, a, and, a, and a, a tool for everyone to look at conveniently rather than have just um, national, regional, local solutions. What do you think, from your experience, that the gateway brings to this, the diversity and uh, inclusion thing, and, and Thomas, you, you mentioned the refugee crisis, which obviously redoubles the problem. I, lo I looked at the, um, the, um, the school education gateway and I, I thought it was brilliant. And I looked at, it was a community space for me. And people could talk together and look for partnership and also exchange good practice and um, uh, e-learning material, uh, learn lots of things, what we said. And um, two years ago, when we um, we did the application on Erasmus Plus, it would have been more, most very, very useful to be able to talk with others. We did that through other channels. But to have an EU central um, place where we can ask questions, have help and everything, and not just a national level, because um, e you have help from national level, but to have that on the EU level, it's really very interesting. So diversity and I looked like yesterday and there were people looking for different partnership in Erasmus Plus. I'm looking for this and this partnership, so I thought it was really good. Okay. Le sorry, go on. You no, no. Okay, Leslie. Um, I I'm interested in, in, in the link between this central tool, if you like, this online tool at EU level and what is being done in, in, in national education or, or a regional educational level, how they marry together, or maybe they don't need to. I mean, do you have a view on that? I am one of the school education gateway virgins. I <laughs> only recently learnt about it. But it seems to me that the, the concept that lies behind this or underpins this gateway um, is crucial to the whole business of diversity and inclusion. Because if it opens up dialogue, dialogue is one of those things that's sorely lacking when it comes to dealing with um, diversity and inclusion, uh, certainly at a political level and often at a personal level, interpersonal level, educational level. It seems to me that we have a terrific opportunity here to open up 
dialogue, dialogues uh, in, in a really significant way. And that in itself uh, seems to be uh, fundamental to uh, the whole issue of diversity and inclusion. I mean, there's lots more that I could say, but that's, that for me is, uh, would seem to be a fundamental aspect. And uh, to the three of you, what, do you, what are the most urgent challenges in div uh, diversity and inclusion in schools that the Gateway c can help solve? Are there particular, I mean, you know, diversity and inclusion is, is clear what it is, but you've mentioned the refugee crisis already. Are there other aspects of it? I mean, we, we've got cultural differences, we've got um, different traditions in, in different member states, I imagine, too. But what are the biggest challenges that are being faced in, in schools in this area that the Gateway can address and help improve, perhaps quicker than would be the case otherwise? Thomas. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced that, that the school cannot, cannot solve all these problems we have in societies nowadays. So it's, school is only part of the, the, the problem or the solution. And therefore, we, we cannot have very, very quick solutions, but we can offer materials. And um, I remember um, an e training conference two weeks ago in Florence where a sociologist uh, professor from the European Institute um, presented her handbook um, of uh, di diversity in Europe and cultural learning. And I would like to see these things there on, on the web because um, it was a, a, a collection of very crude examples, for example, how Danish, uh, a Danish school, they, they were thinking about um, changing their attitude to parents' evenings because people of the Muslim community wouldn't turn up. Or uh, there was a, an example of the, the building the, the big mosque in Cologne City and, and the process the city went through to, 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 to friendly welcome the community. So very, very concrete things, I think, uh, are helpful and uh, good for the teachers. Checklists where you can check your diversity level at your school, um, I mean, religious, ethnic, and so on. You all know these topics, but something very concrete you can use in the classroom. I as you said, I mean, it can't all be solved in the classroom, but in the sense that in as much as it can, um, this resource can be an added value, yes. I think what's really good with this school gateway, it's like education gateway, is that you don't feel as a teacher that you're alone in the school. That you have like your, you have people around Europe that are facing the same problem or the same needs than you. And then you can, you can exchange, you can dialogue, you can create a dialogue and everything. And you can see that others, that there, there are solutions, that people have experienced things. And you know, all this, I really like the thing that it's creating a community and everybody should, and I really like what um, Adam said earlier, that these, uh, this tool shouldn't just be on the net. You know, a teacher should take over and even give their feedback and uh, give more um, e-learning maybe materials or some change in them. That should be their tool because if a tool is not, it's just there on the net, nobody's using, there's no use of it. And, uh, um, but, um, so community, I think that this is a tool and if everybody from Europe can go, like I've been living for the last 15 years in Cyprus, that w Cyprus is very far from Europe, but it's part of Europe. It's very, at the other end of the Mediterranean. And um, I think that will be very useful for people who are very far, who are also have um, um, a place where they, they're linked together and also to EU. Thanks very much. Yes, Leslie. I think it's, I think it's very easy to uh, consider diversity and inclusion against the backcloth of crisis. It's very easy to think of it in terms of refugees and migrants and, and, and so on. Um, at the school level, there will be very few schools, it seems to me, in the countries of Europe and in many other countries that um, are truly seen or see themselves or should see themselves as monocultural. All schools are diverse institutions. All schools have diversity within them. Now, whether that diversity is explicit, whether it's overt in, in the case of sort of people with different uh, pigmentation or, uh, or overtly different language groups, is, that may not be the case, but there is always diversity. And all schools can use their experiences uh, of diversity in order to communicate with other schools and to talk about those issues, again, coming back to dialogue. 
So, uh, I mean, I once wrote about as sort of the, the myth of monoculturalism. It doesn't actually exist. And therefore, uh, perhaps it's an opportunity, yes, to talk about uh, issues such as the refugee crisis, and I'm not certainly for one moment wouldn't belittle the importance of that and the impact of that upon school practice and school policy. But nonetheless, uh, there, are, you know, there are these much more fundamental issues concerned with schools as communities and the way in which they see themselves and the way in which diversity is viewed on the one hand and unity and community is viewed on the other because those things need not, not only need not be in conflict, but they can actually complement one another. You, t you talk there about dialogue, and, and, and one can say that not, not always are the right people or stakeholders involved in a, in a, in a quality dialogue. Um, I mean, the, the gateway presumably is a central feed point through which you, you, all the uh, potential participants in a dialogue about diversity and culture uh, and inclusion can come together and find common ground. Um, because what's important is quality dialogue, not just a random dialogue, yes. despite the fact, obviously, schools, there are, you know, teacher exchanges, there are things, obviously, there, is co there are conversations and communication between schools, between member states, but now, d just to bring it to, Adam said, uh, where, where's Adam, I, I, uh, sorry, I think you said you, you get 20,000 hits a month on the, 20,000 people registered, people registered and 4,500 hits, 45,000 hits a month, now, to me, and I, I'm, I'm too old to know what the relevance of that. It could be millions, but th that sounds a large number. Um, that, does that indicate that this is working when it comes to um, not just exchanging educational ideas, but exchanging um, mechanisms for tackling diversity and inclusion? I mean, Adam, are you impressed by that number? I mean, it sounds good, doesn't it? 45,000 coming on. Uh, for those of you, um, uh, of course, Adam has got a microphone. Just said this is a specialist area. It's not Facebook, so you can't expect millions and trillions of pe people on there. But uh, um, d does that impress you? The idea that already that number of people are coming together on all aspects of, of, of education, but presumably on these issues too. I mean, forty-five thousand. How many have you got a website? Do you have a, anything? Do you have a, a Facebook page, or how many people are following you? Yeah, I, I, I'm not an avid user of uh, so-called social media, and although I have a Facebook, I don't have a Facebook page, but I'm on Facebook, so I, uh, I tend to stay away from that. But even though I see the, the utility of it, and uh, uh, and I. And I said to myself, I ought to be much more involved in, in Facebook. But it, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, I mean what, what you had to say about the quality of dialogue, I think, is, is absolutely right. Uh, so therefore, there need to, be issue, uh, need to be questions about the basis for the dialogue, what people ought to be talking about, and whether, in fact, of course, they're going to be talking about talking in the same language, and I don't mean, you know, in a technical term, I mean whether they're going to be, you know, if you use particular educational terms, uh, I know from a background in comparative education that you use an educational term in one society and it won't necessarily mean the same in another society. So, but it's an opportunity uh, to try and gain some clarity and, of course, to build that common ground that we've been talking about. I think that 45,000 is very promising. And I checked, I mean, you also have national websites for teachers, for example, and I checked uh, the German website, for te it, it says for teachers. Um, and we have around 600,000 teachers in, in Germany, and it was Sunday, one o'clock when I checked, and there were 400 teachers online, and that is during autumn holidays. So um, 45,000, of course, is, is much more, but that's the European perspective, and I would, propose to also see what is go going on nationally so that you, that you do not go and uh, have a parallel thing uh, being developed and have connections to the many websites which do exist and uh, which offer good materials. But um, here, I mean, it, it's really different. It's the European perspective and teachers will easily understand the European added value and the reason why they go here. Thank you. Can I just ask for a show of hands, those of you who, who do use this um, website already, if you do, or have looked at it. Um, yeah, some do, uh, on a regular basis, yes? Okay, but there's lots of hands not showing there, so, so we have an audience uh, 
to address. As you say, there are, of course, there are websites at, at nat uh, national level, but presumably um, you can use a, a, an EU-wide resource to improve education quality in, in general. I mean, uh, uh, apart from educational standard policy at government level in the member states, just that general sharing, uh, you know, sharing best practice um, not in the curriculum so much, but in issues such as how on earth do you deal with these, these increasing problems of diversity and inclusion. Um, it must make a qualitative difference. Now, I'm not, I'm not sort of trying to get you to say certain things, but we're talking about the gateway here, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to tease out from you in how many different ways this gateway can bring added value to educational standards. Now, I know, as you say, uh, you're a virgin on this case, um, uh, but even so, I, your first reaction would be what? Wow, this is a great thing. It should have been there already. Or why didn't someone think of it before? Or I just a genuine feeling from you, even if you are not regular users. No, I think it's a really good, very, very good tool. And like if um, our project Eggfully uh, is finishing, so Erasmus Plus Key 2 project, that is finishing in, in February 2017. And if this project can go on the gateway and say it's possible, it's possible that four countries, Palestine, Morocco, Cyprus, and Portugal are coming together, and France also, to build something for youth and a male project fostering conflict resolution through the study of cultural heritage. This is possible. D just tell us a bit, that it, I know that that is your <laughs> pet project. No, seriously, do No, it's do just like, if, if you have that on the, on the, um, on the gateway, then people will say, oh, that's possible, and I can, uh, I can do it also But myself. what is that project about, okay. in a sense? So this project came from a two-year project I directed in Cyprus called the CAT, Cyprus Artifacts Treasure in Action. And my idea is, like, I'm fed up with conflict. So, um, because, um, you know, Cyprus is divided in two. And during two years, I have been, uh, I just came out and took children from youth from North Cyprus and youth from S South Cyprus, so Greek, Greek, um, Greek, um, Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot, and they have studied like common cultural heritage. There was an Ayayirini co collection of um, archaeological collection, and then they they created like media media um, project. So this um, media um, media object, this um, after people said, oh, shall we do it again and everything? I said, well. I need to find a funding, and I found the funding in Erasmus Plus. And then it was not just Cyprus, but all Middle East. And uh, so we have exactly the same scientific um, approach in Portugal, Palestine, Morocco, and Cyprus, all with 48 youth, all divided by conflict. In Palestine, you would think it would be Israeli and Palestine, but it's not. It's just like my Palestinian partner said, no, 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 we're going to take Palestinian and Palestinian. So this is happening in Naples between the children of the refugee camp of Balat, Balata and the, um, the children from the city. They're not mixing together. Um, in Portugal, it's taking, it's taking place between children and uh, youth because they're 16 years old. Can um, I ask a question? Now, in the, in the end of that project, you will have uh, developed something concrete, which yes. other people can use as well. Yes, exactly. And will it be on the school net? I would love to. Okay, because we, we, we we're, also we're have this... We're developing, and there is a link to that project. There is all, because there is, the project is going um, in the real life, you know, in the country, and there's also a MOOC that is going to be developed from February, and the youth are going to be a, a community manager. So, of course, the MOOC could be part of that, because there is um, uh, e-learning. I saw that you're developing MOOCs, and like... And uh, so, um, if I... Well, I... I'm very grateful to Europe to have been able to, to set up that with such a, a project because four different countries and people of Middle East region are like so grateful. They're saying um, that they, they're so happy because you're doing things that are really matters. You're developing critical thinking but, uh, with youth, what is really very, very uh, important. And I saw that on your school gateway two days ago, there was, you had the e-twinning on digital citizenship, developing also critical thinking and everything. And also you had a poll saying, what is for you media information literacy or critical thinking, what do you feel? And all these things are fostering, you know, good practice for teachers and so for practitioners and, and people to know it's possible. I'm not alone. And this is what Erasmus Plus is 
is really great because you have an idea, but you go to other people and say, oh, I can do this and... Uh, and no, that, that's fine. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> Leslie. And well, j j just to add to that, and I, and I was at a one-day conference about three years ago in Nazareth on uh, diversity and uh, issues, uh, diversity in education in Israel. Uh, and the participants were uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel as well as Jewish citizens of Israel. Palestinians were both Muslim and, and, and Christian. But what was interesting was that the major speaker was from Northern Ireland and was, uh, and was a guy called Tony Gallagher. I don't know if you've come across him. And Tony Gallagher had been a director of something, I think it was called the Shared Schooling Project in Northern Ireland. And the idea was to uh, a, a highly divided, uh, highly segregated school system, as I think many people will know, in Northern Ireland. But the idea was to enable, uh, 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 enable teachers from one school to go into the, uh, say, from a, a Protestant school to go into a Catholic school and vice versa. So shared teaching, shared curricula to some extent in order, again, to come back to, to, to this whole business of dialogue to see what kind of real dialogue could actually take place. And what was interesting was how uh, his talk and his exemplification of, 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 of that share, uh, of shared schooling in Northern Ireland uh, 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 resonated with, with people inside Israel and, and where there had been a similar project, uh, similar projects uh, regarding uh, uh, Jewish teachers going into Arab schools, Arab teachers into Jewish schools. Very much a, a minority pursuit, as I'm sure you're all aware, but nonetheless, here was a situation where, in fact, there was this kind of communi communication going on, and of course, if the school education gateway can foster that kind of process, then obviously will be an extremely good thing. And of course, the, the, the obvious informality of, of, of online media means that you know, it's not just a, 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 a gathering, if you like, online of certain elites or levels of people. Anyone can, can interact. It's, uh, a, 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 it's an obvious point about, about websites generally, but in this particular case, you, know, uh, you have a group of educationalists from around Europe. They can meet, but they usually have the same level. That's fine and dandy, but this gives anyone at any level in the system that they could just look in on it, see what's going on, presumably add their voice if they want. So it, it is um, uh, a very practical way of using a resource that we, we know it works like that on Facebook, Twitter, but for this particular field. Um, I, Thomas, yes. Yes, um, uh, my wish would be to see all, the, all these things which other people can also use in their projects on, on the school education gateway but not all projects funded by Erasmus Plus. You have the project um, results platform, um, but it should be the top quality results which, which you offer on the school education gateway. I would also like to see uh, offers for school heads. I would like to see um, offers for, for young people, uh, young teachers starting their career who have just you know, come from university and they, they are eager to, to be fed on, on what is going on in, in the school sector. I would like to see something about Roma and Sinti education. You have been funding hundreds of, of projects in, in that area as well. Um, so do not only concentrate on, on the topics like school leaving, early childhood education, what you have on the, uh, the um, Europe 2020 or Education 2020 strategy. Talk to teachers, talk to heads, and, and have teachers on the advisory board. I don't know, we were talking, um, do, do you have real teachers? I mean, active teachers, we all probably have been teachers before, but um, real teachers on the, on, on the board uh, involve the teacher unions because they also have a say in it. Uh, we had this International Summit of the Teaching Profession in Berlin, beginning of this year. And uh, we had an active, active discussion between unions and member states, and it was evident that where the, these two work together, you, they can give very concrete input for what is going on and should be going on in the school sector. So um, some wishes um, for the future. Thanks. Real teachers. And, mayb and Real maybe teachers. Um, youth. Yes. Do you think youth could be like the youth who are involved in all these projects? Could, could they go on the school gateway? I don't know if, if they're not teachers. They can, go, they can go on it. No they one, can go yes. on it, yes. <laughs> um, okay, thanks for those, 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 uh, that wish list. Um, just back to the specificity of diversity and inclusion. What mechanisms in your experience have, have been most successful 
uh, in education thus far in, in, in trying to tackle diversity um, and inclusion? I mean, apart from we know the, what the gateway can do, but up, up to this point, are there particular mechanisms that have, that have worked well in dealing with this, or is it a growing, still a growing problem, and one that has not yet been resolved in any, any satisfactory way? I told you I'm not a specialist on diversity, but, but I know that it's, there is no recipe, and it, it always depends on the individual situation at the school. So there are schools uh, who do not have this, which do not have this problem. There are schools uh, which have the, had this problem for a long time, and they have developed, we, I know some cases in Germany where they have developed something like a, an education campus where the school is, is opened up to the wider university where you have social workers coming in, where you have um, people who, who work with parents parallel to the school. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty different from school to school, and I, I don't think there is the one, the one solution uh, where, where you can say you have to do this in order to, 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 um, um, to, to um, uh, work with diversity, uh, yes. to, to find the solution. The problem. Sorry, mm. Leslie. Then, yes, I think we're, we're, we're in mentioning social workers and 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 others in similar kinds of professions, I think you open up a real issue when talking about diversity and inclusion. Uh, yeah, educationists and teachers cannot act by themselves. You know, schools are not islands; they are parts of their communities. Even, even in an era of uh, dare I say it, neoliberalism, where there is choice and. Uh, uh, and people uh, buying private education and so on and so forth. Nonetheless, schools are still located within communities and, re and reflect those communities and will reflect the problems and issues which, uh, uh, which will have an impact upon education, uh, whether they're problems of housing, unemployment, high crime levels and so on. So working with other professionals is really quite important. And if, again, I don't know to what extent the school education gateway can engage with those issues because those issues are going to be quite important if one is trying to build schools as positive, forward-looking communities in which uh, 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 those who comprise the school population, uh, both teachers and pupils and others, you know, uh, are seen as important, are seen as being positive attributes and not as problems, but actually people who are contributing to the school uh, uh, as, uh, as a community. It seems to me that, that that's quite important, but it, well, it can't happen, it seems to me, if schools uh, are isolated in, as, as far as that's concerned. They've got schools, teachers have got to work with others. So the teaching, teaching profession has become a very demanding job nowadays, and uh, we have to mention this as well. I mean, if, if you want uh, all these uh, subjects to be treated at school, you have to give the resources. So that, that's a political, more political uh, subject, which cannot be solved by the school education gateway. But, uh, of course, teachers have to be supported in what they are supposed to do. Um, I would like to add, you ask if there was um, a way Maybe a way is like, I'm coming back to what you were saying about dialogue. And dialogue is, is, is um, being able to take another point of view, so leading to critical thinking. I just want to share something that a uh, youth wrote that I think is very pretty. She's from uh, um, Portugal. She's called Marcia. And it's really good example of what we were saying. It wasn't for Ecfoli. We'd never learn anything about the other country's culture. Particularity, particularity and problems. Before the experience, I didn't give any relevance to what was going on across the world. Now I'm always thinking, if it was me. Sometimes small action can generate great moments, and if we give or contribute now, the world will reward us. We can't think only in ourselves, we have to help each other. I want to thank for this opportunity because now I can see the world differently. Thank you so much. This girl, she is Portuguese. She is really in. Um, she she's not going to school anymore. She left school after primary and everything. And er, this project gave her the opportunity to see that there is another point of view. There are the culture. It's not just her in a, her local. And so she's she's you know experiencing dialogue and diversity and saying that diversity is is really good. It's not just. It's not something that should not be uh, that she should be afraid of. So I don't know, small little. No, th th thank you for that. Uh, uh, and the other point is, I suppose, 
something like the gateway uh, obviously forges links, informal and, and possibly more formal, exchange of best practice, of course, exchange of views and general contacts. I wonder at what point it may actually effectively be, be, uh, produce results that are implemented. I don't know at what stage something like the gateway is looked at by certain uh, educational uh, sort of practitioners, and they say, oh, look, that's happening in Germany. We ought to try that. Because then you have to en engage with your regional and national legislators to, to perhaps implement things. So I, so I doubt if people can look on the gateway and say, there's a brilliant idea for solving diversity and inclusion. Let's rush off and do it in the classroom now. I think you've raised an import, import, important issue. Uh, of course, you know, what goes on inside schools to a very large extent is going to be shaped, constrained by national systems. Um, you know, and, and of course, if, you know, at the higher education level, it's, it, it's constrained by a, a global system as well. Um, but there is always space, it seems to me, inside schools, whatever the, whatever the constraints might be, politically or otherwise, there is space for teachers to do quite a lot of things. And it seems to me that at this level, where there is this kind of dialogue going on at the school education gateway level, that in fact all kinds of things can actually happen which needn't, you know, uh, you know, needn't necessarily sort of uh, resonate with, what, with national policy. Might eventually, might eventually percolate up. But if, our, if, if the task is to try to uh, uh, enable uh, better practice, then those better practices might come about in all kinds of ways, whether it's at the, uh, you know, the level of subtle changes in the curriculum or at the level of different kinds of uh, approaches to teaching. But it seems to me that's all to the good. I don't, I don't really see the danger that, that you, you, you have to you know, comply with your... Um, political uh, level in order to, to work with the things you see on the school education gateway. I mean, teach, as you say, teachers are professionals. They know what they can do in their classroom and they will pick what they find useful. And I wouldn't, wouldn't um, um, position it on, on the very, very top political level. So if you have something very concrete, it can be very, very useful. And as you say, I mean, concrete projects, concrete outcomes can not be used one by one or one to one in, in a different cultural educational background, but they can be made use of. And I, I trust in teachers. They know how to, to use the things they see in other countries. And it's, it's a big opportunity to really, you know, to sit at your desk and you can see what is going on all, all over the place. Uh, of course, we also need the projects, we need the mobility, we need the school education in Erasmus+, Plus. we need more school education. I'm looking at the acting director. We, we need more school education in Erasmus+. Plus. Please make sure that you're not forgetting the schools. Um, but, but that's a very practical way uh, teachers c can make use of things which are going on in Europe. Uh, I think I can take it as read that you're all in favour of uh, the school education gateway as, if not the right tool, but one of the right tools to bring educationists together, um, get the right people together, maybe get the right people with the wrong people, which sometimes can, can be benef beneficial too. So having um, looked at the website, clearly you have, and, and some, of it, some of you know it better than others, is that, uh, Thomas has made a little wish list. Is there anything you saw in it that you, you thought, wow, this is brilliant, but tell you what, I, what it could do with... Um, it could do th this aspect more highlighted or some, th some feature that you think would add value to it already? Um, maybe, but I don't know if that's possible, like a, have a community manager that will um, you know, deal with the online community because to have like, um, because this is not, I, th I don't think it has been implemented, but to have like people sharing ideas and then like forum maybe, a forum where people can say, oh, I'm looking for that, what do you think about that, and this experience, and what does you, so, but of course you need that to be um, linked by a community manager. You're creating jobs, well done. Um, <laughs> Leslie, any, any last thoughts? No, I, 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 I mean, I, I, if I put on my other hat, I'm, I'm Secretary General of the International Association for Intercultural Education, and uh, I suppose in a, in a non-digital manner, uh, we've acted as a kind of gateway for all kinds of ideas, policies, and practices where people from, uh, a lot of people from 
within the European Union, outside the European Union and, and from other countries of the world have come together and certainly uh, the, the different mechanisms at conferences and so on have enabled these kinds of exchanges and dialogues to take place. So um, it, it may be worth looking at, at, if you like, at other fora to see how they might even link in with the school education gateway, other digital fora as well as non-digital fora. Thank you very much. Thomas, last I, word. I, I still um, see um, big potential in a closer collaboration. I'm looking at uh, you e-twinning people between e-twinning and the school education gateway. Of course, you have e-twinning there, but it would be nice to, to have more content-wise collaboration between the two. I mean, I know the school education gateway is very young, and you are 10 years old, so um, perhaps you should try to, to make the best of it and, and get the most out of each other. That would be helpful, I think. Leslie Beranger. Are you, are you going to have ambassadors in every single country, like sharing the good practice and say you should go to school education, get people going and visiting schools and everything thing like that or not? The microphone's coming to you, Adam. Watch out. Sorry. Yep. I, 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 uh, that one. I mean, I think with that one, I'll, I'll pass the, the, the ball back to Thomas and his colleagues in the network of national agencies um, who are there implementing Erasmus Plus for us on the ground. And so I mean, they have a very strong communication responsibility. They're very active in the communication field. And, and I think this should be part of that, of you know, of that Erasmus Plus um, communication activity as well. And don't forget, this is being live streamed potentially to an audience of 7 billion people. Potentially. <laughs> so there could not be a bigger advert for the School Education Gateway in principle. So if you are watching, uh, click on now and boost Adam's numbers. Okay. Can, can, um, I, have a, can, can I have a last, yes, you last can, point? Yes. I mean, this, this is so good and this is so brilliant and this has a big future. Nobody is paying me for, the, for <laughs> what I'm saying. Could you please make sure that you are not abandoning this instrument uh, at the end of this Erasmus Plus generation of EU programs? Because in school education, it takes ages to get something, you know, um, moved and promoted. So keep this, this for at least four generations of EU programs. And don't stop it, because you have been doing things like this before. You, you start something new with a new program, you, you end it uh, at the end. This is really good. This has much potential. Please leave it there and let it grow, this little plant we have. That was the final word on this debate. Thank you very much, Thomas. I think your, your word has been noted. Thomas Leslie Beranger, fabulous name. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and we'll be back in a minute for the next uh, panel. But first, so. <laughs> but before that, um, we have another little uh, video to watch. So if we run back to our seats. Are you a teacher, a teacher educator, or anyone involved in school education? You might be facing challenges in your daily work in the classroom, in a rapidly changing society, and want to find support or training opportunities on how to respond to these challenges. The Teacher Academy is one of the many services on the School Education Gateway, which is Europe's open platform for school education. It is a single point of access to teacher professional development opportunities. The Teacher Academy informs about very popular on-site courses organised by training course providers all over Europe. Some of these courses have already been followed by other teachers and it has helped them meet their training needs. To cover the cost for course participation, schools can apply for support under the Erasmus Plus programme, the EU programme for education, training, youth and sport, 2014 to 2020. The Teacher Academy also offers free online courses for teachers, teacher educators and anyone involved in school education. These courses are specifically designed for the School Education Gateway and for the requirements of teachers. They focus on today's teaching challenges and priorities set for the European School Education. Teachers who want to participate in an online course register on the Teacher Academy and complete the course at their own pace, free and without any cost. And not only this, all online courses are designed, developed and delivered with the guidance of the Teacher Academy's Pedagogical Advisory Board. 
This advisory board is made up of top European experts in the field of e-learning and professional development of teachers. Its aim is to provide guidance on the development of the Teacher Academy and ensure the high quality of its courses. In addition to all these training opportunities, you can find on the Teacher Academy a series of versatile teaching materials created by teachers in eTwinning, the Europe's online community of schools, as well as other EU-funded projects and European institutions. These teaching materials on various topics, such as entrepreneurial learning or citizenship, can support teachers in developing their teaching methods to help learners acquire the right skills in a rapidly changing society. So why not sign up today to make use of the opportunities the Teacher Academy can offer? Stay informed, get involved and develop your skills with the Teacher Academy. OK, so with that thought in mind, uh, we're going to have a little break. Um, ten minute break. I don't know if there's coffee or anything outside, but certainly there are toilets. Um, so we'll be back in ten minutes and we'll be discussing the Teacher Academy. Thanks. Mm-hmm.